This is All India Radio. Power of Listening. Under the series, tonight we take you on a journey to the world of yet another magnificent facet of the traditional Indian knowledge systems. I am Manoj Mainkar. Ayurveda, which means the science of life in Sanskrit, is an over 5000 year old medicinal practice with its own multifaceted philosophy involving an individual's mind, body and soul. The three original Ayurveda acharyas respectfully called Brihatrai were Charaka, Sushruta and Vagbhata. In the previous episode, we touched upon the contribution of Acharya Charaka in Ayurveda. In today's episode, we shall be focusing on Acharya Sushruta and his contributions to Ayurveda. The experts on the show are Dr. Ambarish Khare, Ayurveda Acharya, Sanskrit scholar and Indologist, and Dr. Neelima Thatte, medicinal professional, pediatrician, Sanskrit scholar and Indologist. Stay tuned. Namaskar. In our last week's episode, we tried to know about Acharya Charaka who compiled Charaka Samhita. Today, we would like to know about the golden age of surgery in ancient India. And to know this, we have Dr. Ambarish Khare with us. He is an Ayurveda practitioner, BAMS, MA and PhD in Sanskrit with specialization in Vedic studies. He is assistant professor and coordinator at Sri Bal Mukunda Lohia Center for Sanskrit and Indological Studies at Tilak Maharashtra Vidyapeet, Pune. He has seven books and 32 papers presented at international conferences and seminars to his credit. He has paid academic visits to countries like Canada, France, Croatia, Cambodia and Indonesia. This is a very short uh, and brief in- introduction of Dr. Khare. I welcome Dr. Ambarish Khare. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you for this warm welcome, Dr. Thatte. Sir, last week uh, you talked about uh, Acharya Charaka. So, today we would like to know about yet another prominent personality in ancient India, Acharya Sushruta, who was the pioneer of surgery. Sure. Now, coming to the tradition of surgery in ancient India, it goes hand in hand with the tradition of physicians or general medicine that is of Charaka Acharya about which we talked a few days back. If I remember correct, uh, we have references in uh, Rugveda like uh, Vishpala's leg was broken and maybe Ashwino, they repaired it and uh, replaced it or they gave a metal support to that leg. So maybe such flimsy uh, references are there about surgery. So, how actually the uh, concept of surgery evolved? Yes, it must have evolved uh, as we say need-based practice. To remove a foreign body like a tip of the arrow or to open and remove the harmful formations such as abscess or tumors from a body of a patient is basically a concept of surgery. It also deals with stitching the wounds caused by swords and other weapons during the wars that were fought in ancient India. It is told to us by this tradition that even the knowledge of Ayurveda that belonged to this Shalya Tantra or surgery also was divine in the origin. It was present in the heaven Mm -hmm. and it was transferred by Prajapati to Ashvinau that is Ashwini Kumaras. Then they gave this knowledge to Indra and from Indra, different seers got the knowledge about different practices that were present in this Ayurveda. This knowledge of surgery and related branches was handed down to Kashi Raja Divodasa, that is Divodasa, king of Kashi. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, it is believed that this Kashi Raja Divodasa was incarnation of Dhanvantari. And therefore, this tradition of surgery is also referred to as 
धन्वंतर संप्रदाय द ट्रॅडिशन ऑफ धन्वंतरी बट वेन वी से दट धन्वंतरी इज अ डेटी रिलेटेड टू आयुर्वेदा डू वी मीन ओनली सर्जरी और जनरल मेडिसिन एज सच नो वेन वी थिंक अबाउट धन्वंतरी डेटी ऑफ आयुर्वेद इज देअर इट इज नॉट रिलेटेड ओनली विथ सर्जरी दिस काशीराज दिवोदास हु वॉज इन्कार्नेशन ऑफ धन्वंतरी वॉज रिलेटेड विथ ट्रॅडिशन ऑफ सर्जरी इन स्पेशालिटी अँड देअर फोर ही टॉट हिज डिसायपल्स सच ॲज औपधेनव औरभ्र करवीर्य गोपूरक्षित अँड सुश्रुत द नॉलेज ऑफ सर्जरी दीज डिसायपल्स रोट द तंत्रज बेस्ड ऑन द नॉलेज दॅट वॉज रिसिव्हड बाय देम फ्रॉम काशीराज दिवोदास वन ऑफ देम वॉज सुश्रुत अँड ही रोट अ तंत्र कॉल्ड संश्रुत तंत्र दिस प्रॅक्टिस कॅन बी रिलेटेड विथ द अर्लियर प्रॅक्टिस विच वी हॅव डील्ट विथ इन द एपिसोड ऑफ चरक अबाउट रायटिंग द तंत्रज अँड वी नो दॅट व्हेन पुनर्वसु आत्रेय टॉट हिज डिसायपल्स अग्निवेश रोट आग्निवेश तंत्र सिमिलरली हिअर दिस सुश्रुत रोट संश्रुत तंत्र दिस एन्शंट तंत्र नो मोर इज विथ अस इट इज एक्स्टिंक्ट बट इन दिस ट्रॅडिशन ऑफ सुश्रुत देअर वॉज अनादर सुश्रुत लेटर ऑन हु कॉम्पोस्ड द सुश्रुत संहिता विच इज नोन टू अस इव्हन इन द चरक संहिता वी फाइंड द रेफरन्सेस अबाउट सम डिसिझेस व्हेअर द सर्जरी इज नेसेसरी अत्र धान्वंतरी याणाम अधिकार अँड देअर फॉर वी कम टू नो दॅट इन द टाइम ऑफ चरक ऑल्सो द प्रॅक्टिशनर्स हु प्रॅक्टिस सर्जरी वेअर देअर इट इज नॉट सो दॅट द सर्जरी वॉज ॲबसेंट इन एन्शंट इंडिया हाव एव्हर द टेक्स्ट कॉल्ड सुश्रुत संहिता विच इज विथ अस टुडे इज डेटेड टू फोर्थ सेंचुरी ए डी सो देन देर वेअर टू ऑर मे बी थ्री डिफरंट सुश्रुत येस सो हु वॉज द फर्स्ट सुश्रुत फ्रॉम व्हेअर डिड ही कम अँड फर्स्ट सुश्रुत वॉज ॲज आय हॅव टोल्ड यू द डिसायपल ऑफ काशीराज दिवोदास it is also told that he was vaishwamitra that is son of vishwamitra mm-hmm. and it is interesting to note that in the list of sons of vishwamitra that occurs in the mahabharata, mahabharata yeah. we also get the reference of sushruta so there is uh, this uh, cross connection available or cross referencing available in different texts regarding this sushruta so uh, about sushruta samhita which was compiled later Uh, what were the sections how was the arrangement like we discussed for uh, charaka samhita sure here also we find that it was distributed over 120 chapters mm-hmm. in a systematic way these chapters are mainly divided in two parts or two tantras purva tantra and uttara tantra okay and this purva tantra is further divided in different sthanas or different parts like we have discussed in case of the charaka samhita लाईक सूत्रस्थान निदानस्थान शारीरस्थान चिकित्सास्थान अँड सो ऑन इन द सूत्रस्थान वी नो दॅट ऑल द सब्जेक्ट मॅटर ऑफ द संहिता इज गिव्हन इन अ ब्रीफ नटशेल मॅनर सिमिलरली हिअर ऑल द मॅटर ऑफ द सुश्रुत संहिता इज डिस्कस्ड इन द सूत्रस्थान हाव एव्हर हिअर वी फाइंड द रेफरन्सेस रिलेटेड टू सर्जरी आय अँड ई एन टी दॅट इज इअर नोज अँड थ्रोट सो दीज थिंग्स आर ऑल्सो गिव्हन हिअर विच आर स्पेशालिटी ऑफ सुश्रुत संहिता देअर इज ऑल्सो डिस्कशन ऑन यंत्रज अँड शस्त्रज दॅट आर टू बी यूज्ड इन दीज ऑपरेशन्स यंत्र इज अ ब्लंट टूल दॅट इज यूज्ड मे बी टू चेक टू एक्झामिन द इंटरनल ऑर्गन्स ऑर टू रिमूव अ फॉरेन बॉडी अँड शस्त्रज आर ॲक्च्युअली शार्प टूल्स दॅट आर यूज टू कट or in size in the body there are different types of yantras total number is 101 oh. some of them are also used in modern times with different names for example swastika yantra or sandhansha yantra which are like forceps or there is tala yantra which is a scoop and there are different types of shastras for example karapatra that is knife or vriddhipatra that is kalpel or badisha a hook or vrihi mukha a trocker it's quite interesting i do remember uh, i have seen the pictures of instruments designed by sushruta in our books of surgery so i remember those pictures 
so as we are discussing about instruments what were the suture materials he used maybe there are wounds so he needs to stitch them so how uh, he used to do that yes there is a description about suchi that is needle different types of needles are in use at that time and threads of silk were used for suturing the wounds but as you know the silk is not a soluble material yes. so it can be used to suture the wound at the outermost surface of skin only but there are instances in the sushruta samhita where some internal wounds are to be sutured as well for example if there is a wound abdomen. caused by some arrow or sword in abdomen then you might need to suture an intestine at that time sushruta suggests that some specific kind of ants can be used we know that these ants have very firm grip once they bite and this particular characteristic feature of these ants has been used by sushruta to uh, cure the disease of intestine while suturing the intestine he says that ants are to be picked up one by one and taken to the place of wound mm -hmm. as soon as the ant bites the wound the head should be severed off in this way the head will remain or the bite will remain in situ in, in yeah. situ at the place where the wound is there okay. and one by one after putting this ants and making them bite the wound will be sutured like it is stapled we can say yeah. and being the organic material they will be dissolved in the course of time because there were no cat guts yes, in ancient yes. times yeah so this was a brilliant way of uh, using different kind of stapler how he has described healing of wound or are there any instances of non healing wounds and does he give treatment for non healing wounds yes some treatments for such things are there available use of different medicinal herbs oils as well as honey has been mm -hmm. suggested by sushruta in curing the wounds and he has also described the different types of healing or non healing wounds and what is to be done in these cases Okay, so we uh, talked about uh, surgery, surgical wounds, and materials used. Uh, please tell us about other diseases which uh, Sushruta has mentioned. Yes, the diseases are discussed in the Nidana Sthana, where uh, we are supposed to diagnose a disease properly. There are the diseases such as facial paralysis, piles, urine stones, bile stones, different types of skin diseases, mm -hmm. ascites. tumors and fractures so all these kinds of diseases that mainly may be requiring a surgical process are discussed here in the nidana sthana but how he has given treatment of ascites i mean has he described any draining procedure yes it is it is there oh and we also get some reference about the stages of pregnancy and how the human body is formed how mm -hmm. it grows and development takes place in another sthana called sharira sthana he also has a knowledge about some diseases that are transferred genetically from earlier generation to next generation mm -hmm. and he says yasya asya hi anga vayavasya bije bija bhaga ha upatapto bhavati tasya tasya hi anga vayavasya vikruti rupa jayate नोपजायते चानुपतापात सो इफ देर इज अ डिसीज और सम डिफॉर्मिटी प्रेजेंट इन द बीज इन द स्पर्म और इन द ओवम ऑफ फादर और मदर देन इट पासेस ऑन टू द चाइल्ड एंड इफ द ओवम एंड स्पर्म ऑफ फादर एंड मदर आर फ्री ऑफ एनी डिसीज एंड डिफॉर्मिटी द चाइल्ड डजेंट गेट एनी डिफॉर्मिटी और डिसीज सो दिस कंसेप्ट वॉज नोन टू हिम इन अ थियरी so he really knew about congenital defects or maybe familial disorders which yes. were transferred but, but that must be derived only because of uh, keen observation yes keen observation and this was the theoretical knowledge that was with him similarly in chikitsa sthana when he gives different procedures of surgery and all these things which we have seen he also discusses some other things along with shalya tantra that is shalakya tantra mm -hmm. now coming to shalakya tantra the name is derived from the word shalaka that is a needle because in this particular shalakya tantra diseases of ear nose throat and eye 
are discussed and we know that these are very important organs they are very small mm -hmm. and to look into these organs or to get inside these organs it is necessary to use a shalaka or a needle like equipment which is very small in a size mm -hmm. and therefore this name shalakya tantra has been given to this particular thing he also discusses a few things about toxicology that is agada tantra <laughs> there are different kinds of poisons that are present in this nature they are distributed in two parts or classified in two parts one being sthavara that is the poison formed in the plants or maybe minerals mm -hmm. and another is jangama that is mobile animals. and by <laughs> yes by mobile it is uh, referring to different animals there are different kinds of bees or flies then spiders serpents Snakes, as yeah. well as uh, scorpions and all these different kinds of poisonous animals and their venoms they are dreadful for human being so what kind of procedures are to be used has been given by sushruta and different agadas or mm -hmm. antidotes are suggested by sushruta in this chapter okay so does he recommend uh, uh, like letting out blood in case of snake bites or yes, scorpion yes it is there uh, along with other uh, prescriptions of medicinal herbs as well we also get another uh, description here as you have referred to letting out of blood it is called jalauka avacharana jalauka is leech okay. yes very good and this leech was used to remove the blood from the body of patient it was believed that blood gets intoxicated in certain diseases and it if you remove this toxic blood from your body it helps to cure the patient and specifically uh, leech was used hmm. as uh, this actually we know that this is a dangerous animal which sucks blood from any uh, animal but it is believed that certain kind of leeches suck the blood only which is toxic mm -hmm. and it doesn't take away the uh, good blood from your body so okay. these leeches were identified and collected by the surgeons or physicians of those times mm -hmm. and they were used to treat these patients i think they are still uh, used i have seen in konkan area specifically leeches are applied to a particular site and uh, treated yes they are uh, used in modern days as well by ayurveda practitioners uh, you said about uh, ear nose throat and eye diseases of uh, all these four organs so sushruta was i think pioneer of cataract surgery i mean it's amazing to know that Uh, in such ancient period he used to do that uh, surgery yes actually these practices are dealt with in the uttara tantra he has described 76 diseases of eye mm -hmm. and many of them almost 51 he has suggested some surgical process oh. that will cure the disease of eye and cataract is one of them mm hmm and what about uh, bladder stones i mean he he was dealing with the uh, stones in the urinary system yes so uh, as we have discussed earlier these things or some surgical processes regarding removing the bladder stones were also in practice and we get some information about that from the sushruta samhita is there any mention of pediatric surgery or specifically diseases of children has he mentioned yes there are certain diseases of children uh, in which some surgical process as well as some medicinal herbs can be given to cure the diseases however at that time we know that there were certain diseases which were not curable by these regular practices according to sushruta and these diseases were supposed to be caused by some supernatural things oh. and these are called as balagrahas mm -hmm. or the demons or evil powers evil powers which possess the body of a child and there is also a description of some mantras or useful rituals that is to be performed to cure the child but it is not related only to performance of ritual because mm -hmm. he has also suggested some medicinal herbs that are to be used to cure or to free this child from the possession of these balagrahas uh, since we are discussing about uh, the surgery so 
टू थ्री क्वेश्चन कम टू माई माइंड हाउ यू ही यूज टू डिस इन्फेक्ट द इंस्ट्रूमेंट और फ्यूमिगेशन ऑफ ऑपरेशन थिएटर लाइक वी डू नाउ अ डेज सो हाउ ही यूज टू प्रिपेयर ऑल दीज थिंग्स येस देर वॉज दिस कंसेप्ट ऑफ हाइजीन प्रेजेंट इन सुश्रुत संहिता ऑल दो वी नो दैट देर वॉज नॉट मच नॉलेज अबाउट माइक्रोब्स एट दैट टाइम और वी कैन नॉट से दैट बैक्टेरिया एंड वायरसेस वेर नोन टू हिम बट ही न्यू दैट इफ वी डू नॉट फॉलो द प्रॉपर हाइजीनिक प्रोसेजेस देन सम इन्फेक्शन्स टेक प्लेस एंड दिस पेशंट गोज इन सम ड्रेडफुल कंडीशन वेर इट इज नॉट इजी टू क्यूर आफ्टर द ऑपरेशन सो ही हैज सजेस्टेड दैट अ क्लीन प्लेस शुड बी यूज फॉर परफॉर्मिंग एनी सर्जिकल ऑपरेशन इट शुड बी आउट ऑफ टाउन एट सम क्लीन प्लेस which is uh, free from any wind or some outer disturbance oh. mm-hmm. a fumigation prepared by burning different medicinal herbs is to be used or applied to mm-hmm. that hut or place where the operation will be performed and only then by cleaning the surgical instruments one should let the patient enter in this hut and the operation is to be performed after that and this operation was performed by uh, making the patient drowsy or maybe giving some kind of painkiller or how was it performed i mean they must not have used anesthesia yes the anesthesia was not available at that time but i think that many a times patient was not given any painkiller or some uh, drowsy drug and the operations were directly performed oh. on the patients but sometimes it is possible that for a patient it is not possible to bear with that pain mm-hmm. and therefore the sushruta samhita uses the word sukumar the <laughs> patients who are very uh, delicate. delicate and are not able to bear the pain of mm-hmm. surgery mm-hmm. then he s- tells us that different kinds of alcoholic beverages are to be given to this patient and mm-hmm. once the patient is in unconscious state after uh, drinking this alcohol mm-hmm. the surgery can be performed on him so practically uh, the operations were d- done uh, without giving anything to the patient just maybe tying the patient and go ahead with the procedure but uh, how was the practice done i mean how uh, the students were taught how to perform a surgery were there any models used or uh, they were practiced on dead bodies yes uh, as we know in the modern times also it is very much necessary for a doctor but especially for a surgeon that he should be expert of uh, anatomy. anatomical procedures because if you do not know anatomy of a human body then it is difficult to perform any surgical operation on the patient same was the case at the time of sushruta mm-hmm. he said that a corpse should be kept in a flowing water for mm-hmm. 15 to 30 days mm-hmm. and then it should be used by a teacher to show the internal organs and other things Mm-hmm. that are present in the body and teach the science of anatomy to the students then there were also some practices given to the students so that they will master the skill of surgery especially incising the body etc mm-hmm. and this is called as yogya vidhi and in this training procedure different kinds of gourds pumpkin large cucumbers were used uh-huh. along with wooden and wax objects oh and students were supposed to practice on these objects one by one so that they will come to know about the texture of different tissues hardness and softness and how they are using the shastra or scalpel which is present in their hand mm-hmm. how deep it can incise in a hard subject as well as soft and after mastering this skill he will be performing the surgery hmm. on a dead body hmm. first hmm. and after mastering on the dead body then he will proceed on a living human being hmm. but the animals were not used no direct reference of animals is found i have read something about marmasthanas mentioned in ayurveda so what are these marmasthanas yes there is a description of different marmas in the body uh, the number 108 that is 108 marmas are there but this is not related with some practice of acupuncture as such mm-hmm. but these are the places that are present in a human being where if he gets any wound or any hit 
by any chance then it will be dreadful for him some marmas are called as sadya pranahara that he will be immediately dead hmm. if any hit is there on this marma sthana some are kalantara pranahara that if any thing is struck Slow on death. this uh, particular point then he will be dead after some point mm-hmm. of time then there are some other marmas who will make some deformity in his body he will live on but there will be some deformity forever if that marma sthana is hit mm-hmm. by any person so this particular marmas are actually to train a surgeon mm-hmm. in a proper way and he should avoid touching oh. or going to that marma so this is a different use of marma sthanas mm-hmm. in the ayurveda so he is practically warned uh, not to touch uh, yes. these marma sthanas uh, this must be quite useful in case of plastic surgery maybe because there is a mention that sushruta himself was a pioneer of uh, plastic surgery like kind of uh, rhinoplasty yes hmm. in the ancient times there were different battles and many times if any person's uh, face is hit by some arrow or sword and there is some wound on his nose mm-hmm. then the face will be deformed and it is very difficult to live with this deformed face forever so sushruta suggested a correctional method called rhinoplasty in the modern sense we can call it as a plastic surgery of the nose but it is not only for cosmetic purpose but just to reform the wounded nose and for that he has suggested that a skin from the forehead mm-hmm. of the person is to be used it should be cut from three sides and just by uh, taking it downwards it should be fitted on the nose mm-hmm. of that person and nose should be again reformed so that it will look like a proper nose of a human being this is excellent rotation flap technique which we call in modern medicine yes. and this is used in case of all uh, facial malignancies or malignancies in head neck area where we remove the uh, tumor and then the flap is rotated from forehead skin or cheek skin maybe yes so this was the similar process this is really amazing to know that in such ancient period he had that concept of uh, plastic surgery and uh, actually in the course of time as we know that the personality of sushruta is much unknown to us in modern times but he lives with his work that is sushruta samhita which is with us and it should be also noted that there were different translations of this sushruta samhita and these translations were in the languages like chinese and tibetan oh. and the buddhist monks took this sushruta samhita into these countries and uh, because of these translations it was also possible to date the sushruta samhita to 4th century ad so this sushruta samhita is not only present in india but it has also went to the foreign countries as well yes i completely agree because uh, even though sushruta's existence about how many sushrutas were there it is debatable but his legacy lives all over the world because modern medicine also owes uh, many things to uh, sushruta so thank you dr khare we really enjoyed today's talk about uh, the golden era of surgery in ancient india and uh, we would like to discuss similar knowledge systems in future also thank you dr khare thank you acharya sushruta You heard the 28th episode of our all new series on traditional Indian knowledge systems power of listening. The experts on the show were Dr. Ambarish Khare, Ayurveda acharya, Sanskrit scholar and indologist and Dr. Neelima Thatte, medicinal professional, pediatrician, Sanskrit scholar and indologist. We hope you enjoyed it. The series has been conceptualized by Shashi Shekhar Vempati, CEO of Prasar Bharati, and produced by Neelima Patwardhan and Vinod Kumar. Special thanks to AIR Pune, Amol Parth, and Randeep Thakur for their contributions. This episode is also available on our official YouTube channel, Akashvani AIR. Be there on the 15th of April, same time, same frequencies. This is Manoj Mainkar signing off from Delhi. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.